It's Disney's Zootopia versus Illumination Sing on Movie Feuds. As a bonus, we've implemented an animal themed pun counter. So let's hop to it. Zootopia is a good old fashioned buddy cop flick. Although one of them is not technically a cop for the majority of the film, he's gonna make his way there. Jason Bateman plays Nick Wilde, a sly con artist who just happens to be a fox. It's pretty cliche in the best way possible. Bateman has a long history of taking the role of the smartest guy in the room. It works very well here as he's bouncing dialogue off Jennifer Goodwin's Judy Hopps. A bunny with a can-do attitude and a never give up mentality. Are those two phrases redundant? Probably, but let's not split hairs. There are plenty of other actors attached, such as Idris Elba, J.K. Simmons, and even Shakira has a bit part as a pop singing gazelle. K2SO voice actor Ellen Tudyk voices Duke Weaselton. But I think most of the audience's favorite animal-human hybrid comes in the form of a sloth. I was going to suggest a sloth movie spin-off, but then I realized one page of a script would take 20 minutes of screen time. <laughs> That's just silly. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? Mina, voiced by Tori Kelly, is my least favorite cliché. They are always such a waste of time because you know the outcome the moment they come into the picture. A down-on-her-luck voice talent that needs to get over her fear of a public audience. We've seen this time and time again, so every scene where she chickens out is just annoying to me. And that's the biggest problem with most of the cast and the movie in general. It's played so straightforward and obvious there's not much to look forward to outside of some great musical numbers, which are oddly few and far between. The film's main protagonist is a koala named Buster Moon, voiced by Matthew McConaughey. He's perfectly alright, but there is an odd amount of time focused on his issues that frankly just aren't that interesting. He may have the qualifications to run a theater, but he's short on dough. As always, the celebrity voices are out in full force. There's Reese Witherspoon as a housewife slash mother pig named Rosita. Seth MacFarlane singing his heart out as Mike, a smart mouth mouse. Wreck-It Ralph's John C. Riley voice acting as a sheep named Eddie, and my blushing bride, Scarlett Johansson, unfortunately only lending her vocals to this picture. I have to say it though, Black Widow can sing. Rounding things out is Kingsman's Taron Egerton as a gorilla from the wrong side of the tracks. Johnny has the most interesting backstory for me, although once more, we know how this thing's gonna play out. I think I hint all the major players. Let's keep this thing moving. There's no time for us to be lying around. I'm aware these jokes are terrible, but I've laid off a uh, majority of my staff this year. Um, it's been pandemonium um, in 2016, so I'm hoping to correct things next year. Sing pretty much covers every plot element from Sister Act 1 and 2, uh, which I celebrate immensely. A parent who doesn't approve of the life the child is pursuing, check. A timid singer with impressive vocals just waiting to be released, double check. A leader who's trying to bring his crew together while hiding his own set of problems, triple check. The story of Singh is an odd one. Why so much focus and time is spent on Mr. Moon's financial issues is perplexing. I'm pretty sure kids don't care about bank foreclosures and parents don't exactly jump for joy at the prospect either. When the singing starts, the film fires on all cylinders. So why does it take until the third act of the film for this to occur? Some of the most enjoyable parts of American Idol and other singing competitions is watching the terrible performers fall on their face. Yep, we only get like three minutes of this in the film. I guess we don't want to take too much time away from Mr. Moon having a car wash to raise some money or going to some old decrepit hag's house and pleading for her to front some cash. You know, kids stuff. Sing is not a total mess though. There is definitely heart and great moments. Most of them coming in the final act with the solo performances. Zootopia thankfully doesn't run at a snail's pace, but it also doesn't rush through plot points. It's a simple tale about a bunny with bigger aspirations. She wants to be the first rabbit cop, and even though the deck is stacked against her, she is determined to prove her worth. Of course, just because she's more than qualified, that doesn't mean others feel the same. She's swiftly thrown into a thankless job as a meter maid. She's down, but she's far from out as she's mixed up in a mystery involving a missing otter. It's also at this point where she is swindled by Nick and his sidekick in a humorous popsicle selling gig. As the story progresses, our two leads form a strong bond and solve the case. Where Singh takes stereotypes at face value, Zootopia goes a little deeper and shows just how easy it is to label a general consensus of people with broad brush strokes. The third act reveal is what really makes Zootopia stand out from the pack. Driving home that old adage that you should never judge a book by its cover. After all, the villain could very well be a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
I hope you really appreciate how many levels that pun works on. They won't. Oh my gosh, look at her. Elton John has so many good jams, and I have to thank Sing for reminding me again how awesome the song I'm Still Standing is. Sing has a lot of good numbers, but when Shake It Off came on, I almost had to leave. I, I just can't. I just can't anymore. It was a nice little number, but it's been played to death, and we just need to move on from it. Can we move on? C can we please move on? Give Me Some Lovin', Under Pressure, and a fantastic rendition of My Way by Seth MacFarlane were major highlights. And no, Limp Bizkit fans, I'm not referring to their version of the song, although that would have been amazing. Disney's go-to composer now, Michael G. Aquino, who recently did Rogue One, crafted some good stuff for Zootopia, and Shakira gets some radio play with her single, Try Everything. Uh, what it boils down to is sing his heads and tails better than Zootopia in the music department, which... <laughs> I, I, which I would hope, right? It's called Sing. When I first saw the trailer for this as a stereotypical black woman, I thought to myself, oh, hell no. They already made a sequel to Zootopia? They looked very similar from the onset, but upon viewing the films, it's clear now how much better Disney's movie looks. There's an extra level of detail to everything. The movements of the creatures seem far smoother too. Everything from the fur to the weather effects looks incredible. That's not to say Sing looks bad because it certainly does not. It just so happens to be competing with the king of the jungle. And that's a tough place to be. This is the easiest victory I've handed out in a while. Zootopia is a far better movie from almost every aspect. Of course, I'm one person with one opinion. The votes reflect the many, so comment on your favorite of the two. Make sure to vote using the YouTube polls. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is movie feuds. And now that I look around, all I can say is you have got to be kidding me. This place is a pigsty. And frankly, I am embarrassed for all of you. Clean this crap up by next year. We have a show to produce and I'm still rolling. This is Hawkward. All right, thanks for watching, everypony. <laughs>